how I research my companies. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the hoodie to prove it. And today we're going to be doing a video that I have been asked to do for so long, probably since a thousand, two thousand subs, and I just never got around to it. I'm going to bring you through pretty much from start to finish. First of all, how I find the company even exists, and then how I researched them. I don't know why I kept putting this video off because this should actually be a really, really helpful video for all of you guys going forward. So I'm actually very excited to make this one. I always tell you guys in my videos that I'm not a financial advisor. You should always go out there and look into these companies yourself and do your own due diligence before investing. But I haven't actually showed you exactly what I do. So that's what's happening today, people. So right before we get into the video, can I please ask you to smash a like on this one? It's a little bit different than usual, so I would really appreciate that like. Drop me a comment if you get some value out of this or anything along the same lines you'd like me to do. I'd really like to start putting out some more, you know, helpful content as opposed to just speaking about stocks. And of course, if you're new around here, please do me a massive favor. Hit that juicy red button. Join the family, people. The road to 20k is on. We're this close to 15,000 subs. But anyway, I won't wait any of you guys precious time let's get straight into the video first of all you have to actually know that a company exists before you can possibly start researching them so how would you find out that companies exist in the first place well for me as a youtuber i get literally hundreds of comments every single day and a lot of them are asking me to you know look into a company or give my opinion on a particular company so you guys genuinely help me out a lot with the comments and on the topic of youtube it can be a great place you know get companies put onto your radar i mean if you want to my channel in the last five days, there are 10 videos there speaking about a variety of different stocks. And every Saturday, I do these videos here, 10 stocks to watch next week, where we give, you know, a large variety of different companies. So YouTube can be a very good place to, you know, get a company put onto your radar. I don't think YouTube is the best place in the world to do research, but to get a company onto your radar and to potentially get, you know, a basic understanding of a company, it genuinely is a good resource to have. If you're a dividend investor, this is a website you have to know about, okay? Simply Safe Dividends. Say for example, you want to find some really safe dividend paying companies. You can go into here and you can filter everything you want. So I want very safe dividend companies. I want them to have a dividend growth streak of at least 20 years. And you know what? I'm really interested in, let's say, information technology and consumer discretionary. I'm going to click apply and it will show all of the companies that match what you are looking for. So this is a very good resource for dividend companies in particular. SPAC Insider. This is one I use from time to time. It's in the name. This is where you will get news on SPACs first. So you know when we were all looking at SHL, Tortoise Acquisition Corp for Helion, when we were looking at Vecto IQ, this is a place to get loads of good information. And so you can find out about companies here before they become popular. And another one is Nasdaq.IPO, okay? It has an IPO calendar. It shows all of the recent companies that have gone public. And if you keep scrolling down, a little bit it'll show you upcoming companies this is where i actually first found out about jamf jamf holding corp ticker symbol will be jamf and i made a video on them all because i went onto this website and then proceeded to do the research and we'll speak about all of that in today's video but if you don't know that a company exists you obviously cannot look into them so they're just some good resources for actually you know finding new companies but the big thing is especially you are all on youtube right now you're all looking for companies you're all looking for more information don't ever buy something just because somebody on YouTube does. I say this in every single video. At the start of this video, I'm not a financial advisor and nobody on YouTube really is. And if they are, they're still not giving you personalized financial advice because the financial needs and the investment needs of an individual are all different people. So something that may work for me won't work for you. I do think YouTube is a fantastic resource, again, in regards to finding companies. Like my channel, for example, there's so many different companies we cover every single week. It's just not the be all and end all. It's not where you should get the bulk of your information from. Okay, so once you have a company and you wanna start looking into them, where should you start? One company I've been looking into a lot recently is Workhorse. So I'm just gonna go through Workhorse. And literally, I would search up Workhorse, okay? I would go onto their website. And this is where it all begins. I know some people start off in more complicated places, but I really like to start at the bottom. I like to start it off really simply, get a basic understanding of the company, and then get into the more complex side of things. So I will literally look through the entire website, okay? This is the front page, the Workhorse C1000. Electric delivery vehicles in production. So straight away, we know that they're in EV. Now we just need to figure out what makes them different. Scroll down a little bit, we see they have some press releases. That's very good, because we'll get to all of that later on. So I just go ahead and I click onto the first tab that is at the top of the screen. Working how you always have can only get you so far. Workhorse is changing the way the world works. Then it gives a little bit about their technology. So the fact they have delivery vans, okay? In particular, 
you start to see things like this, little nuggets of information that will all add up later on when we get to some of the more complex stuff. The 10Qs, the 10Ks, all the SEC filings, the investor presentations, etc. So initially you'll see it has a 100 mile range and that sounds quite poor, you know, it's weird. And then we figure out their last mile delivery vans and it all makes sense. This is the first step I take when I'm looking into a company. Just go to the website. I'm not doing any in-depth research. I'm just figuring out what they're all about. Then they have a little bit on where it all began. This is always good to know the history of a company. Then I click the second tab, which is C-Series. I scroll down a little bit, built specifically for last mile delivery. Okay, now it all makes a little bit of sense. That 100 mile range is actually okay. Or is it? I don't know. I haven't looked into the company before. Now I'd have to go and research last mile delivery and how much distance those trucks usually need. And upon doing that, you realize this is plenty. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through Workhorse's whole website. That's not what this video is about. The investors tab is always a very important tab. And it's where you will ultimately end up spending a lot of time if you are interested in a company. So after looking at the website, you have literally the most basic understanding of the company. And if at this stage, I have some sort of interest in the company, if I've seen something that interests me at all, what I like to look for is an investor presentation and it's literally right there investor deck the 2020 presentation So I'll go in I'll download this and here we have a 19 page presentation So again, we're still just at the stage where we want to figure out what a company actually does a lot of the time people You know start looking into I don't know past performance. They start looking into financials things like that before we even understand what the company does and to me the most important thing is the company itself. So here's the investor presentation, okay? And there's so much really useful information in there and it's so easy to digest. You're not just getting thrown facts and figures into your face about a company you don't understand. This is where you really learn about a company. So the first real piece of information we see, workhorse, redefining last mile delivery. So again, we're getting that last mile delivery image in our head. And now it gives us so much more information about what that actually includes. And then we keep scrolling down and it gives us so much useful information. Now again, I'm not gonna go through it, that's not what the video is about but this is the first place where you really get a good understanding of the company and what sets them apart from the competition and ultimately if there is potential there i mean if you go through an investor presentation and you start to think you know what this company there's not a big market share here there's not much potential there's nothing to really set them apart you're not going to be as inclined to buy. But if you see that they're potentially a top level player in a growing market, it's going to pique your interest. So look, sometimes going through a website and through an investor presentation can literally be done in 30 to 45 minutes and can give you an incredible, just basic understanding of a company. Sometimes it can take a lot longer. When I did my video on Jamf, okay, it took me personally a lot longer to understand the company and what they wanted to do than it did me with Workhorse. There was just an awful lot more to the website. Now that's not a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing. But just know, sometimes this first stage can literally be done in half an hour. Sometimes you could be spending easily two or three hours on this part and it only gets longer. But I actually don't see many people on YouTube going through investor presentations. And I just think that they are, they're incredible. I've used them in so many of my recent videos because they just make it so easy to understand. And again, I wanna drill this point in today. If you're investing in a company, you're doing exactly that. You're investing in the company first and foremost. Just because a company has good financials or something along those lines doesn't mean there is enough opportunity for this company to give you back a decent return in the long term. That's why Workhorse piqued my interest so quickly, okay? Because I saw that they were in, you know, a very quickly growing market, first of all. So the overall sector, electric vehicles. Then their subsector, okay, last mile delivery electric vehicles. And then you start to look into it and there's next to no serious competition in the US as of right now. And then you see that there is a contract going with USPS for $6.3 billion. You see that just through looking through this 19 page investor presentation. So then you think, okay, I initially like the look of this company. Let's get into the research. So at the start of the video, I said, I like to start with the very basics and work my way up. So the absolute basics, you know, maybe you're on YouTube. Then you go to the company's website. Then you have a look at the investor presentation. The next step is also really simple. I open up a new tab and I literally type in Workhorse, I already typed in 10k earlier, stock news. I usually just click this little button here, more workhorse stock news, and you are going to be greeted with an abundance of articles. And what's really important to do here is read through an awful lot of these, or at least skim through an awful lot of these. And don't be biased, okay? Try find points that are both for and against the company. Remember, you're an investor. You want to invest in a company that you completely and utterly understand. You have to know the upside and the downside. So Workhorse is very popular right now. There is a lot of articles out about them. There are some companies I like reading more than other. Yahoo Finance, I do very much so like. So I'll open that link. FX Street, they're okay. But this article here surges on Monday amidst speculation of SPAC deal. If you don't know anything about this, you go into that, definitely. And again, why Workhorse Group's stock is up sharply today. I'd open that up. The Workhorse CFO talks USPS contract, says company has 
Yes, this is interesting straight off the start. That was what caught my interest in the investor presentation. I'm going to open that up. And essentially, it doesn't matter if it interests you or not. You open up every one of these links. You look through at least 20, 30 articles from all over the internet. And I'm not joking. This is an easy place to start. When you start getting into the financials, when you start getting into the 10Ks and 10Qs, this is so much simpler. People literally put all of the information in there for you. So you start to read through 10, 15, 20 different articles, and you are going to get a really, really, really good understanding of the company at this stage. All of these articles will be drilled in with numbers, with percentages, with DAOs, with SMPs, good points, bad points. You're going to get a great understanding of the overall business. Now, me personally, since I make videos, if I find something interesting, I would often open up my notes and put it into there to reference back to for future videos. But even if you don't make videos, it could be good to make a list of key points. You know, either just write them on a note on your phone, on your laptop, or literally get yourself a little notepad, write the stocks ticker at the top of the page, and just write down loads of useful information. Because when you're looking through 10, 15, 20 different articles, the first, the second, the third article you start looking through, by the time you're on to your 20th, you're going to forget a lot of what was said. Also, it's at this stage, it should be known, take breaks. Don't just be here like this. Just skimming through everything, not really taking anything in. Remember, you are researching a company to invest your hard-earned money in. Give it time. But that's what I would do. I would look through this article. I would look through this article. I'd look through this article. I'd look through this one and so on so on in my eyes this is all prep work if after doing this you still have a great interest in a company it's pretty much time to get down and dirty so what i mean by it's time to get down and dirty okay is it's time to look through their sec filings particularly their 10ks and 10qs and it's also a good idea to have a look at their 8ks and if you're not aware of what these things are an 8k is required to announce major events relevant to shareholders their 10k is their annual report and their 10q is a quarterly report so you know it just lets us know how the business is looking financially overall so we go on to the sec filings for workhorse group and we can see all of these so we see there was a very recent 8k i definitely look into that there was another 8k down here i would also definitely look into that the most recent quarterly report I'd look in there and also the most recent 10k I would definitely be looking there now generally if you search up the company's name followed by investors relations you can just go into investors and it will show you the information so you know here I could just go click in for the 2020 q1 earnings I could go through all of the other quarters earnings and scroll down and it has all of the 10ks as well and then further on you're going to the press releases a lot of the 8ks will be here and just some other relevant information but anyway let's say I want to go look at the 10q what can you expect from the 10q table of contents financial information so financial statements an awful lot to do with a company's financial information will be found in their 10Q. That's the main reason investors look at these 10Qs is to see how a company performed financially over the last quarter to see if we're seeing some quarter over quarter growth, some year over year growth, etc. Then there's other information such as legal proceedings, risk factors. This can be a great place to go into and see what the actual risks are with a company because oftentimes we get very excited looking into a company. We want to be bullish on a company. It's in our nature. We want to believe a company will do well because that means that we will make money. I always recommend reading through these risk factors. And if you go over to the 10K, which is the annual report, you will see as well risk factors. Genuinely, please always read through these. I know you want to be a bull, but to be a true bull, you have to understand the risks. Just because a company has good ideas, good prospects, doesn't necessarily mean they're a good investment. Now, I will say the most important thing to me personally is the company itself and what they do. But you do have to have a level of financials to back that up. Now, again, this does change depending on you know whether it's a relatively new company whether it's a high risk growth stock or whether it's you know a safer dividend stock so you can't judge every company equally but it is important to know what's going on when i started investing okay i remember opening up a 10q i think it was for coca-cola or something at the time okay and i was so overwhelmed as a new investor i really didn't understand it and it took me months of reading these forms to start to understand them and to start you know having the brain power to sit down and actually read through these forms and trust me it will make you such a more informed, such a more confident investor. No matter how many YouTube videos you watch or no matter how many articles you read online, until you get the words directly from the company's mouth, you will not understand the company as inside out as you should. So I really do want to put stress on this. If you want to be a good investor, if you want to be confident in the investments you make, read the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks. I know it's a chore, but please do it. Now, sometimes you're going to do all of that, okay? You could literally spend 10 to 12 hours looking into a company very easily. And at the end of it all, you're going to be like, I still don't really understand the company. If that happens, 
it's not for you. You don't have to invest in every single company you ever look into. If by the end of doing all that research, you are confident, you know, you believe in the company, they have financials that you personally are happy with and you see good prospects, happy days, you have done your due diligence. Now, one more thing I wanna speak about, you should probably do this before the 10 Qs and 10 Ks, to be honest, is have a look at the management, have a look at the CEO, because great CEOs and great management teams lead to great growth. You wanna know what these people do, okay? So the first thing you obviously wanna look at is the CEO, okay? Dwayne Hughes, senior level executive with more than 20 years experience, including direct business relationships in the automotive, advertising, and technology segments. For a CEO, that's what you want to see. You want the man who understands the sector inside and out, who has experience. Prior to joining Workhorse slash AMP Electric Vehicles, Dwayne served as COO for Cumulus Interactive Technology Groups. Prior to them, Dwayne spent nearly 15 years in senior management positions with Gannett Co, in including his duties as Vice President of Sales and Operations. So straight away, the CEO, a lot of experience in relative fields. That's very important. I'm telling you, if you go and look at the biggest companies in the world, you know who their CEOs are, and it's for good reasons, because they are incredible innovators. They're incredible at growing businesses. I mean, let's just take Tesla, for example. Elon Musk. Without him, no way Tesla would be where it is today. I don't think anybody else in the world could have done what Elon Musk has done. If we have a look at Google, okay, this is a CEO you may not actually be aware of, but his name is Sundar Pichai. That's definitely not how you pronounce it, but I'm sorry, Sundar. You're not ever going to see this video anyway. So he became the CEO of Google October 2nd, 2015. Since that exact date, Google is up close to 150%. And shortly before he became CEO, the stock's price actually spiked big time. So this was more than likely off the news that a new CEO was coming. And since then, it's actually up closer to 200%. In the five years before he became the CEO, Google had only gone up 116%. So management really does make a massive difference on a company's growth and therefore their stock growth. So I mean, obviously spend the most time looking into the CEOs, but do look into the COOs, the CFOs, and so on and so forth. It is genuinely very important. Now, did you notice I haven't mentioned a stock chart yet? Because this to me is genuinely one of the least important things to know. You have to know the business, you have to know the management, you have to know the past performance, you don't have to know the stock's price. So once all that's done, yeah, maybe I go and I have a look at the stock price and I see what's happened. And with Workhorse, we can see that was a crazy five years. I mean, they were up nearly 450%, they came back down massively. As of right now, they're up over 700% on the five-year chart. Now, Workhorse is a, not a traditional company you'd be investing. I mean, now if you look at any well-established company stock chart, for example, like Microsoft, in general, it's gonna look something a little bit more like this. Now, Microsoft has had a weird history as well, in all fairness, but in the last five years especially, it's been immense. Notice again, Microsoft had a very slow period for a very long time. Microsoft got a new CEO, February 4th, 2014. Since becoming CEO, he has brought Microsoft stock price up over 450%. In the 10 years before he was CEO, they had only gone up about 42%. Management is important, guys. Please do your research on management teams. And then you can just go start getting some extra little bonus pieces of information. So again, we'll go back to Workhorse. And right now I'm on Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha has so much useful information on there. Where I will spend most of my time is on financials. Now, if you go into financials, you will see financial statements, which has their income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. I oftentimes look at the balance sheet for companies, overview, SEC filings, splits, options, everything. And for free, you can see the last five or six years of information. So instead of having to go through five or six 10K forms by yourself, you just go to a great website like this. Let's go to the balance sheet, see their current assets, see how they've grown or gone down. You can see their total assets, how they've grown or gone down, what they are actually made up of, current liabilities, total assets, etc, etc. Then, you know, I mentioned Yahoo Finance earlier. You could just search up yet again, Workhorse. And again, there's just so much really useful, really to understand information here. You can have a look at different stock charts. You can have a look at trading volumes over the years. You can see what analysts, I think, of it in the short term, mid term and long term. You can scroll down and you can see their last few earnings and if they've bet or done worse than estimates. You can see their financials, their revenue versus earnings. You can see analysts recommended trends, everything like that. But again, this is just kind of, you know, the little cherry on top when you've done all of the real research. So after seeing this video, I hope that you will now understand that watching a 10 to 15 minute YouTube video is nowhere near enough research to be confident investing in a company. And one of the big reasons I'm making this video is because I was that person before. When I was first getting into investing, I watched loads of YouTube videos. I'd see big YouTubers invest in a particular company. I wouldn't look at a single 10Q. I wouldn't look at a 10K. I wouldn't even look at a balance sheet. I'd look at a max stock chart. And that was all, that was all. And weirdly enough, 
that didn't work out very well for me. I had to sell out of a lot of positions, either at, you know, a marginal win or a marginal loss, because I invested in companies I didn't understand. I didn't do my due diligence and I wasn't comfortable letting my money sit in those companies. If you do the proper research, you will have so much more confidence in your portfolio, you won't have the anxiety that comes with having to check it every single hour of every single day that the market is open. It will pay off massively for you in the long term. So guys, there we have it. That is how I personally research my companies. There is literally an infinite amount of time that you can spend researching any given company on any given day. And you will have to keep up to date with companies as well. Like me, for example, and again, we'll use Workhorse as an example. You have to keep up with them right now because they're very high risk in nature if this USPS contract doesn't come out. So you have to know what's going on as soon as it happens. I just wanted to kind of push, you know, newer investors. And I still am a very new investor. It's important to keep that in mind. But I did just want to, you know, give you guys some sort of resource to come back to if ever you get confused and if ever you don't really know where to start. That's the purpose of this video. Now, of course, there can be a lot more that goes into researching a company. But these are some great points to really get yourself started. A lot of people just aren't willing to put in the actual work when it comes to it you know a lot of people aren't willing to spend hours reading through their 10 q's and their 10 k's and that is where an awful lot of really really valuable information will be found guys so if there's one thing you take from this video it's please do that because i'm sure you're already doing the rest of it anyway guys hopefully you were able to take some value out of this video if you did watch until the end i'd really really appreciate it. if you did just smash that like button and even drop me a comment down below let me know what you thought those two things helped me out so so much and of course if you're new around here please do subscribe to the channel we upload 10 or 11 videos every single week i don't know how i'm doing it but it's happening i hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day people i will see you for tomorrow's video peace